is Sarah Milligan with the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program. I am in Blanchard, Oklahoma today. Um, it is February 23rd, 2016. I'm talking with Carla Witt for the Cowboy in Every County Project, which is part of O State Stories um, collection. So, let me just pull up my notes again that I've gotten from you. So I. You have a really interesting story. Usually, um, I like to get a bit, a little back, bit of background to know more about you. But I think in this sense, I want to get more background to find out about your family and their intersection with OSU. Yes. Um, so maybe let's start with a little bit about. Um, let's start with you specifically, just sort of like where you were born and where you grew up, and a little bit about your parents, and then sort of move backwards to there um, into your grandmother and sort of her, the story that you hinted towards um, with her intersection of OSU. Does that sound good? Oh, that, that sounds fine. Okay. That's fine. Um, well, I was born in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma City in 1963. Um, my mother was Betty Lou Oyster Griner. Um, what a great name. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, both sets of my great-grandparents on my mother's side um, settled around Stillwater during the land run back in the, you know, back in the 1880s, 1890s. Um, my grandmother uh, was Ruth Van Arsdale, um, oyster later. She was born in 1892 in Stillwater. Um, she attended Oklahoma A&M, um, attended classes at the old Central Building in 1908 and 1909. Uh, of course, she was just 16 years old, but um, at that time she had completed her schooling in the one room schoolhouse and was making plans to be a, a school teacher herself. And so she attended classes at Oklahoma A&M. And, and then she was a teacher in uh, a couple of different small school districts that were located just a few miles west of Stillwater back in the early 1900s. Uh, that was all before she married my grandfather. Um, they were married in 1918 in Stillwater. Um, and they had my mother and also two other girls and a boy. They had a total of four children. Um, all four of those children attended Oklahoma State. They were all raised on a farm just west of Stillwater. Um, some of the family is still on that farm, about five miles west of Stillwater. Um, they, uh, as, I, as I said, all, my mother and her three siblings all attended Oklahoma State. Um, my mother um, gained her bachelor's degree and her master's from, from OSU. She became a school teacher, taught for about 24 years. Um, I have an, uh, my aunt, my mother's sister, um, she attended o OSU. My, her name is Alice Oyster Bennett. She met her husband, uh, my uncle Courtney Bennett, at OSU. They, I think the story was they saw each other in one of the rooms in the library, just saw each other across the room, and that was it for them. Back in 1948, was, my uncle, had, uncle Courtney had been to World War II and had, had, uh, was then going to school and met Aunt Alice, and they were married. They were married for about 63 years, I think, until Uncle Courtney passed away in 2012. My mother, uh, as I said, uh, um, received her bachelor's and master's from Oklahoma State, and then, and then I was born in '63, and um, there was me and um, a total of six grandchildren, including me, that attended Oklahoma State during the '70s and '80s. Um, I think at one time I realized I was the youngest grandchild, and. Um, for about 17 years, from about 1968 till 1985, my grandparents had at least one grandchild enrolled at Oklahoma State, uh, sometimes two, you know. Um, and my grandfather was still alive during all that time. My grandmother passed away in 70, 1977. But um, my grandfather was alive until 85. In fact, he passed away just the same week that, that I graduated from OSU, so it was it was like he no longer had any grandchildren at OSU, so it was time to go, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, um, and then since then we have, uh, that's, that basically tells about three generations of my family, and, and then we have a fourth generation, that, that there's a, six kids in the fourth generation that have, have attended and, and graduated from Oklahoma State. A couple, a couple of my cousins also met their, their spouses at OSU, and, and uh, 
So there, there's a big, a big part of my family history is intertwined with, with Oklahoma State University. That's, that's for sure. One of my earliest memories is, like I say, my grandparents uh, lived in Stillwater when I was growing up. So I became very familiar with Stillwater and, and Oklahoma State even before I attended there. Um, one of my earliest memories, I think I was about five or six years old, we had had a family gathering at uh, my aunt and uncle's farm out west of Stillwater, and, and uh, my oldest cousin was, was already attending Oklahoma State, and so we dropped her off on campus uh, after the family gathering was over. And, and so, that, you know, I was five or six years old. Um, that's one of my, my earliest memories of being on the OSU campus, and uh, so it's, it's been a big part of my life, that's, that's for sure. A wonderful part of my life. <laughs> Sounds like it's been consistent. <laughs> Well, I wonder, I, you know, that's what I think is so interesting. I wonder, um, did you ever talk to your grandmother about what it was like whenever she was there um, as a 16-year-old? I mean, that was such an early time period for the university in general. I mean, that, that was pretty new. Um, I think what the... I mean, the college hadn't been around for that long at that point. So I'm, I'm just curious if she ever talked about it. She talked a little bit. Um, she said it was it wasn't really for her. It wasn't that much of a change from from her earlier schooling because it was it was all in one building at that time. There wasn't a big campus like there is now. Um, it was just it was very. Uh, there was a small group of students. You know, I think there might have been a hundred or or maybe a little more than that. But you, everybody knew everybody. You know, it was really kind of a. A nice time to be there. That's interesting. I wonder. Um, I wonder how what the ratio or how many women there were. You know, I don't remember her mentioning that. It just seems. I mean, to me, I think. Well, sixteen. So she went through a one-room schoolhouse until the end, right. and that's where she came out and then decided she wanted to be a teacher. I just wonder if. I, um, and you may or may not know that, and that's fine. But if many of her like schoolmates went with her if that was a natural progression since she was sort of in the area um, or if it was something that uh, was out of the ordinary. I think it may have been out of the ordinary because my my grandmother and also my mother, well my grandmother just kind of spread it to all her children, that education was a very big part of their lives. You And even for me, I remember growing up, I just, I, I don't really remember a time when I didn't know I was going to OSU. I mean, I knew I was going to college for sure. That was a big thing in my family. And, and it wasn't, even when I grew up in the 70s, it wasn't really a big thing in every family. Um, but, but really, uh, you know, Oklahoma State was the only college I really ever talked about in my family. Uh, so I just kind of knew that's where I was going. So I think that was a big thing. Education was a big thing, going back to my grandmother. I've heard my, my Aunt Alice talk about that too, how um, she remembers growing up that um, it, it was all about you're going to get your education, you know, you're, you're going to, uh, when you finish school, you are going to college, we're going to make sure that that happens. And so it, it was, it was a big thing in there in, in my family going way back there. Um, so I, I think for my grandmother, it probably was somewhat out of the ordinary. It, it may be, I, I didn't know her parents, but it may be that they were, um, they were uh, really big really thought education was important too. So, and of course, her being there close to Stillwater. I, I do remember she talked about riding a horse to, to go to class, and, uh, you know, that, that uh, seems kind of foreign to us now. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it also seems foreign to think that there is like a horse, not a stall area, but you know, that that would be common to see that on campus. Yeah, People yes. doing their commute. <laughs> Well, I, that's part of it. So I, I wonder if your you said your aunt Alice talked about it that it was sort of expected for them to go. Um, I'm curious a little bit more about that as far as the gender as well, because that's still that would have been when your when your mother's generation and your aunt's generation that would have probably you said the 40s, sort of the probably the. 30s to right. the 50s in that sort of time? Yes, my mother's my mother and her siblings grew up during the Depression era. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, of course, money was tight. Um, but 
they, they talked about how education was very important. They were going to make a way. My mother talked about when she attended Oklahoma State, uh, for some of the time she lived with a, an aunt who lived there in town in Stillwater. And, uh, and I think it was a deal where they didn't really, they didn't really pay, I, th I think her name was Aunt Sally. They didn't really pay Aunt Sally any money for my mother to live there, but she helped with the house cleaning and that sort of thing. And, and so that, was, that gave my mother a place to live part of the time. Although I do know that my mother part of the time lived in Willard Hall. It was a, a dorm at that time. And then I also lived in Willard Hall. It was still a dorm in the early 80s when I, uh, when I first attended Oklahoma State. So my mother and I both lived in Willard Hall for a time. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I imagine that the uh, rules for Willard Hall were quite different between when your mom was there from when you were there. I would imagine. I, I remember she talked about how there was a curfew. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what time it was, but they did have some sort of curfew. You had to be in your rooms. And I remember by the time I was there, there was really no curfew. They, mm -hmm. You were pretty much free to come and go as you pleased. <laughs> what did um, your mom major in when she was there? My mother majored in elementary education. Do you remember what your aunt or your other? Um, aunt Alice, uh, I believe her major was language arts ed education, and, and she later taught high school English. And um, and my major, as a uh, for my bachelor's degree, was also language arts ed education. <laughs> and. Um, but then I came back to OSU. I did teach school for a while, and mm -hmm. then I came back to OSU and got a master's in business and uh, completed that in 1989. I was actually at OSU for most of the 80s, so <laughs> with a little <laughs> break in the middle. But I, I loved the place so much. You know, I really hated to leave when it was time to leave, but um, you know, you can't always stay there forever. <laughs> but uh, but ever since 89, I've been in. My current occupation, which is, I work as an agricultural statistician for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Oh. And I do some instruction with that job, too. Uh, mostly I teach adults on some of the agricultural surveys that we do. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Um, So, um, so you remember as a, as sort of a young child being on campus, um, and that's obviously stuck with you. Is there a particular thing about campus that stuck with you, a feeling or a, a visual memory or anything like that? Mm. I'm just always curious what sparks people's right, sort of draw. Right, right. Um, well, for me, it was always a place that just kind of, seemed like home, seemed like I belonged there. I talked about my early childhood experience of just being there when we dropped off a cousin or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then later I was in 4-H and so I attended 4-H Roundup that was that was held at OSU for several years. And uh, so I became very familiar with the campus um, being there for 4-H for events. And I remember when I, when I came there as a student, as a freshman, my some of my friends were, they were so amazed that I knew where everything was <laughs> because I was already pretty familiar with the campus. Things that stand out to me, I, uh, of course, I always liked the Theta Pond area. That was just always so, so beautiful. And, and uh, as a young child, I remember being just in awe at those tall dormitories, and I guess those are about to disappear if they haven't already. <laughs> but I just remember that just being so, because I had, I had been to Oklahoma City a little bit, but you know, I, I lived in the country in eastern Oklahoma, which is where I grew up, and um, we didn't have any tall buildings around, <laughs> you know. So that I just remember that just being, just just being in awe of, of those big tall buildings mm -hmm. and everything. So, if you were born in Oklahoma City, where did you end up growing up? Well, I actually grew up in a, a little town called Depew, Oklahoma. That's D E P E W. DPU or DePew. <laughs> Some people pronounce it differently, but uh, that's where my parents had a farm. Um, I was born in Oklahoma City because, um, well, my mother was 40 when I was born and she needed to go to a specialist in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. which, um, so, so you, that, circumstance, but not, um, but that wasn't your home. Right, right. That's, that's just where I was born. But I grew up at the Pew at the farm. Uh -huh. and, uh, my, my mother had taught school at Depew for about eight years before she and my father married. And then they got married and they had me. 
and that's that's where I grew up. We we didn't live anywhere else. My my uh, mother lived there until she passed away in 1991. Um, but she lived there until then. Yeah. So you grew up in a rural area. Um, you were in 4-H. Yes. Which I think is pretty a pretty common way for folks to interact with OSU. Um, what did you do while you were in 4-H? What were some of your um, points of interest? Mm, I gave a lot of speeches, public speaking, um, and sewing and cooking, kind of the traditional stuff. Mm -hmm. I lived on a farm where we had cattle. I never really raised animals for 4-H, for though. That just didn't really interest me that much, I guess. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, those were the main things I did. I remember too when I came uh, for OSU Roundup, we would we would usually have some sort of a ceremony there in the, of course, the old football field was called Lewis Field, I believe. Um, and I remember just being in awe of it too. And, and of course, the football stadium we have now is so much nicer <laughs> and really nice. But um, but I remember back then Lewis Field just seemed like bigger than anything I'd ever seen in my life, you know, it just, it, it, was, it was just so big. <laughs> I, just, I just remember kind of having, just being awestruck by, by that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that, that makes sense. Um, so maybe tell me a little bit about um, school and, and things like that in, in Depew. Um, was, did you go to, was it a small, for example, was it a small high school or what was sort of your class size? It was a small high school. My graduating class had 46 students. Um, and really, you know, being a small rural school, I don't know. There wasn't a big emphasis on going, furthering your education there either. That, as I said, that came from my family. Um, I believe I'm in contact with some of the people I went to school with, and um, out of 46, we probably have 10 or so that went on to college. Um, but it wasn't that wasn't really a big a thing that was really encouraged. It was just kind of your small town high school. We we didn't have a whole lot of extras. Everybody knew everybody. Did you uh, ever get any pushback? Um, not from your family, I understand they were supportive, but maybe from other people in the community about um, your plans to go to college? Mm -hmm. No, not really. Because, of course, everybody in the community knew my parents, too. They knew my mother had been a school teacher. And, yeah. and, uh, um, so I think they just kind of thought that was natural. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> um, well, I wonder if by the time you got to Oklahoma State University, if um, you felt like you were prepared for classes? Did I feel like I was prepared for classes? Mm -hmm. um, probably not as well as I could have been. Um, I, you know, I had good grades at my, my high school, um, but I did find some of the classes at OSU to be a little bit difficult, uh, more difficult than what I was used to, of course, in high school. I remember at times feeling like I could have been a little more prepared, but I was pretty, pretty determined. I was gonna, I was gonna make it work one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, what made you choose on uh, the major you chose, language arts education? Oh, I mentioned my aunt Alice. How mm -hmm. um, she was a high school English teacher by this time, and, and uh, she was a person I greatly admired and looked up to, and and. Um, of course, I mentioned my mother was also a teacher, and that, that's a big occupation in my family, too. I'm kind of the one who's gone a different way, really, but that's okay. Uh, but we have, in my family, over, well, I mentioned my grandmother also taught school for a while. Um, over about four generations now, we probably have about 15 teachers or so in the, in the family. Um, even, it's kind of interesting, even my mother's older sister, um, she and my mother both went to work in Washington, D.C. during World War II, and uh, Aunt Aline met her husband out there and stayed out there and raised her children in, in Virginia, close to Washington, D.C. Um, so they don't really, they didn't really have quite the same upbringing that the rest of my cousins did here in Oklahoma, me and my cousins here in Oklahoma. 
Um, but yet she has a grandson who is a teacher. Uh, and, and like I said, he's never really spent time around the rest of, uh, of our family, but, but yet he, he drifted that way too, which is good, <laughs> really good. But it's, it just kind of seems to be, that, that was something that was really ingrained in my family too. And, and um, so I think that's why I chose to pursue it. Mm-hmm. When you got into the coursework for that, did you feel like it was a good fit? I did. I did. It was, it was courses that interested me. Good. Um, so you mentioned that you lived in Willard. So did you live there the whole time you were there? I lived there for two years, and then I moved off campus after that. Mm-hmm. Um, was that an easy transition from on campus to off campus? It was fairly easy. Um, I, I liked living at Willard. I liked the dorm life experience, and um, and I, I lived there the first two years, so I think it was really good for that time because you know you didn't have to worry about fixing your meals or anything like that. But um, when I moved off campus, I think it was something I was ready to pursue. Um, I had a good friend that I shared an apartment with, and and we were both pretty. Um, frugal, I guess, with our money, and we realized we to share a small apartment was really cheaper than living in the dorm at, at that time, and uh, so it, it seemed like the right thing, yeah. and they were both good experiences. Um, what were some of the things that were going on on campus while you were there? Were there um, things that you participated in? socially or sports or clubs or anything like that? The big, uh, the, the uh, main organization I was involved in is called Chi Alpha. It's a Christian student organization. Mm -hmm. um, I believe they still have a Chi Alpha house on Duck Street, right across from the YMCA. I'm not really sure. I haven't been there lately to, to see if it's still being used for that purpose or not. But, uh, but, but at, that, at this time in the 80s, we had weekly meetings there. Uh, it was just kind of a place to uh, to fellowship with other other students, and um, we, we would have a weekly meeting where we would sing songs and usually have a devotional or something like that. And then and then it was the house was a place to hang out at, at other times too. We could go there and watch TV or play games or, or whatever. Just kind of a nice place to go hang out. Um, and we also had what was called the Chi Alpha Choir. We a, a group of us that would. Travel, we traveled around to churches um, all over Oklahoma at different times, and uh, we would sing some songs we had learned and usually give a, a devotional or something like that. And we just kind of, it, it, was, it was a way to raise money for Chi Alpha and to kind of publicize Chi Alpha among prospective OSU students and, and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And, uh, so that was the big thing I was involved in. I was also for a time involved in a group called Kappa Phi, which is, and I'm not even sure if it still exists. I know Chi Alpha still exists, but Kappa Phi was, it was, we met in the Methodist Student Union. It was, it was an all women's group. Um, I mean, it was, it was like a Christian service organization. We had, we had a couple of service projects we would do each year. I remember one year going to the Salvation Army building there in Stillwater and, and helping just do some maintenance and clean up and organize things there and that sort of thing. Um, so those were the two main organizations I was involved in. How did you find out about them? Or how did you get involved in them? Um, I think both of them, I had, I had met somebody in the dorm that was involved and, and so that's how I, mm -hmm. how I came to be involved. One of the big things that happened on campus, I remember while I was there, it was 1988, that's when I was there getting my master's degree. Um, the presidential election, of course, was going on, like it is this year, and um, Dan Quayle uh, came to the OSU campus, I remember that specifically. Um, I even remember <laughs> something he said in his speech, because it was so outrageous. Um, 1988 was also, of course, when we had a really good football team. That's when Barry Sanders won the Heisman. I remember that, too. That was, a, of course, one of the great moments in OSU history. Were you at that game? Um, oh, yeah, I was at the games that year. Um, and, um, but I remember Dan Quayle during his speech. Of course, I realized he probably didn't write it. Somebody wrote it for him. And, 
Um, one of the points he made, well, let me back up. Um, the football team was really good that year, but we were really good on offense. We really, the defense was not so good. <laughs> Most of the games, we just managed to score more points than the other team. Um, but anyway, in, his, in Dan Quayle's speech, he talked about how he and, uh, he and George Bush, of course, the, the team that was running for president, um, they were taking after our football team and promoting a strong defense. <laughs> well, <laughs> obviously somebody hadn't done much research on the football team, but that's okay. <laughs> was there a lot of talk about that afterward? Did a lot oh, of people yeah, pick up on that? Yeah, everybody was laughing about that. <laughs> Well, he's not been to one of our games, but obviously not. That's okay. <laughs> oh, you try and do sports analogies, but, uh, right? <laughs> but that's, it turned out to be, you know, of course, it's one of my funny memories from OSU, so. <laughs> so that's, that's good. Was he a guest speaker or a commencement speaker? He, he was a guest speaker. It was a campaign event. Oh, I, think, yeah. I think they had him set up in front of the library, and I remember we were all out on that lawn there in front of the library. Um, so it was, yeah, it was, it was a campaign stop. It was just a couple of weeks before the election, I think. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I can visualize that, too, in front of the library. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember there was a big crowd gathered to hear him. In fact, I think I remember, and I'm not, I know they've remodeled things. I'm not sure how things look these days. But you know how the, you have the area in front of the library, and then you have the student union just kind of over here mm -hmm. a, a little ways to the south. And, and you had, or you used to have that kind of porch out in front of the student union. I don't know if it's still there. Mm -hmm. but, but I remember a bunch of us, I think I was among a bunch of people that was gathered there on the porch and we could, we could see him from there, you know, and there was, and, there, and the library lawn was just full of people. That's interesting. Yeah. So that was, that was a big event I remember. <laughs> I would do it. Um. Was there, I wonder if there were a lot of, uh, that, let me rephrase this really quickly. Um, the fact that they made OSU's campus a stop on their campaign, campaign event, I wonder if the campus seemed like there was a lot of political activity with the students. Was there, like, did you, do you remember there being a sense, because it seemed kind of weird to me that they would come all the way to Stillwater yeah. instead of, so I wonder if there was a sort of a reason behind that. I, you know, there may have been. I, I remember, I remember hearing about, like campus Democrats and campus Republicans. I wasn't a part of those organizations, mm -hmm. um, so I don't really. I'm not sure how big they were, but I do remember hearing about them. So they must have been pretty involved. Um, but yeah, I guess they may have, may have thought that was a good place to stop in Oklahoma. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's. Have to look into that and see if they went to OU too. Or yeah, yeah, I'm not sure where else he went. Huh. Um. So, uh, so you went to the sporting events and you participated in a couple of different organizations. Um, was there? What about academics? Like, what do you remember? Some of your classes, or or maybe classes you particularly liked, or that stand out because they were problematic, or professors, or anything like that. Anything stick in your mind? Well, coming from a small high school, I remember it was intimidating at first to go to some of the big classes I had as a freshman. Like I remember having, um, I think it was like an orient, a freshman orientation type class in the Seratine Center, and it was, it was in that auditorium that holds about, I don't know, 500 people or so, you know. And there was 500 people in my whole town <laughs> where I grew up, well, maybe 600, but, but you know, that was, that was a little intimidating. I, and there were a couple of other classes I had like that that were pretty big, and, and so I remember that being a little intimidating, but, but we had smaller classes too. Like I remember having a, I had biology in my first year, I remember, and I remember we went to a lecture that was, was a big class like that, but then we had a lab that was just a small group of about 15 or 20 students, and so that was certainly much more, uh, gave you much, much more personal time with the instructor and that sort of thing. 
but really, um, one of my memories too is when I was working on my master's, I took some math courses that I needed a little bit of help with at times. And uh, I remember being able to go to the professors during their office hours and, and, and get the help I needed, and, and they were always very helpful. Um, you know, even though at that time, uh, I think there were over 20,000 students. I'm not sure exactly how many, but, but yet most of the professors we were, were willing to take time like that with, with you. <coughs> so, uh, so, you know, it didn't seem that intimidating all the time, really. It, it's, even though it was big, it, it seemed like that they, a lot of the professors made it personal, so that was, that was good. As far as something that really stands out, I don't really... And if the answer is no, that's fine too. <laughs> yeah, I don't really remember anything, anything in particular. I think you actually, I think you answered what I was kind of thinking about, or, you know, or there, sort of the challenges of coming from a small community and ending up in a university that right. does have a lot more students in it, and if that was, uh, if it ended up being a, sort of a classroom situation for you that was comfortable. I think for me it was probably more comfortable than it is for some, because I was already familiar with the campus, and so I wasn't having to figure out where each building was located and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, I can see where it's, it can be intimidating for a new student that hasn't ever been there and is really trying to learn everything all at once. Uh -huh. um, well, I wonder too about finances. Um, were there a lot of scholarships available? Was that, um, was it something that you could work and or maybe did work and help pay for your college, or is that something that I'm just kind of curious about the situation? It seems like that's sort of a big focus of what we talk about with students now, and right. and there's I'm curious on how it's been in the past decades as people have gone to school. I was very fortunate. Um, I'm the only child that my parents had. Um, they married later in life, and they, they had me. And they, as I mentioned, education was very important, especially to my mother, and so, and to my father too. He didn't go to college, but it was still important to him. He saw uh, how, he, he realized that it was important. And so he and my mother had started to save for my education early in my life. And uh, so I was very fortunate. I did work some of the time. I did not have to work all of the time. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of the memories I do have of working, I, I actually worked at the library for a time. Uh, in the area where they check in the magazines, and I don't even know, with everything being online now, they probably don't even do that anymore, but, but we would get magazines and publications, and, and we had to check them in and get them filed in the proper places and all that. Um, I remember that was when I understood how you could read a foreign language but not really understand what you were reading because we had some foreign publications that came, and. I kind of knew what they were because I had seen them, I would see them over and over and recognize, recognize the name from having seen it before, but I had no idea what it said. <laughs> but um, I worked there for, for a time, for about one semester, I think. I, I also worked at the, agri at the architecture building uh, as a, um, oh, sort of a, a secretary to the professors. I would type letters for them and and uh, whatever they needed me to do. Um, that was a really, a really good job. I had that job for one year. Uh, and that was while I was working my master's degree. Um, but really most of the time, um, my parents uh, were able to uh, support me and I, I did not have to work all the time. I worked during the summers, uh, but that was usually, uh, I did work at the student union one summer. I was attending classes one summer and I worked at the food court for the student union. Um, but I was, I was fortunate. I didn't have to work the whole time I was in school. Uh, of course, it, you know, it was much cheaper back then, <laughs> more affordable back then. I think, I, you know, I wouldn't guarantee this is, is exactly correct, but I think when I started as a freshman in 1981, the, uh, I want to say the lower level classes were like $16 <laughs> per credit hour. <laughs> I know that, that sounds <laughs> very, 
very unreal now, the way it is now. But, um, and then by the time I was working on my master's, I think the graduate courses were about $50 a credit hour. <laughs> that was the late 80s. Um, of course, I was in state. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, it seemed like back then it, it was more affordable for, for most students than it may be now. And I'm not sure exactly what it costs now, but I know I've, I've heard it's, it's up in several hundred dollars per credit hour. <laughs> and uh, that's just hard to imagine. Well, and I wonder if you had um, peers uh, that that could sort of work to help put them south through school. Was it, was it possible to do that? I'd be even curious. It, it, it was. I had some friends that, uh, well, there in Willard. I had a couple of friends that worked in the cafeteria there in Willard. And uh, they, were, they were supporting themselves while going to school. So I, I think jobs, if, if, if you needed a job, they were pretty readily available. Yeah, okay, interesting. Um, so when you graduated with your undergraduate, what happened? What'd you do? I went to Prague, Oklahoma and taught high school. Uh, I was there for one year. Um, and that was a good experience in, in a lot of ways. Uh, for me though, I just realized teaching high school might not be what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, and of course I still had some friends at OSU, so that was when I decided to go back and get my master's. And, and, and that was a great decision because I, I had some great times with friends I made during that time, friends that I'm still in contact with today. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that was, that was and is I, I, uh, one of the great parts of the college experience, I think. You make, you make friends that stay with you for, for life. Um, so when you went back to get your master's, you went for business, correct? I actually, I actually studied business education, and I was one of the, I'm not sure what they have now. At that time, they were phasing out the business education program at OSU. I'm not sure if they ever phased it back in. <laughs> but, so at that time, I was one of the last people to graduate in business education. What, how did you choose? that that would be your master's? Well, I still wanted to stay in something related to education, but yet I wanted to expand my horizons a little bit. I, I felt like I might want to teach in some capacity, but I wanted to kind of have other options available to me too. So, so I decided to go with business education. Um, was there a difference from when you were an undergraduate to a graduate? Is the way you interacted on campus or your experience in general? I think by the time I was there as a graduate student, I, I of course I was more mature and I think I realized more the importance of what I was doing. I mean, I, I knew it was important as an undergrad, but I, I think I was like a lot of kids as an undergrad. I, I went there right out of high school, you know, and uh, I think maybe I didn't really realize how how much my experiences now would impact my life later, you know. Whereas as a graduate student, I think I felt like school was more important than I did before. That it was really important to really dig in and, and get everything I could out of it. Yeah. Um, do you feel like your classes were easy to come back into, switching majors from language arts to business education? I guess they're both in the education, but they still have different right. parts. It was a little bit different, um, but it, it seemed like a natural fit for me. I had, in my bachelor's, I had majored in language arts, but I had also gotten a minor in math, and so a lot of your business classes are somewhat math related, and so it seemed, it seemed pretty natural for me. And of course, by the late 80s, computers were, were getting to be more in vogue, <laughs> but you know, still kind of a new thing for a lot of people, and um, so there was a lot of uh, computer-related classes, which was which was really good. I, uh, those, those were really, I really liked those classes. Interesting. Was that um, was there a big transition on campus then to to make computer equipment available to students? I'm I'm sure there was. I don't really remember being that much aware of it at the time. I guess. I wonder if you had computer assignments for classes and things like that. Were those like in class labs that you had or were there 
computers you could use like in the library or other places like that? There were, it seems like there, they were just starting to have computer labs you could go to and, and complete some of your work. Um, you know, it, this was the late 80s, so not everybody, you know, everybody didn't have their own computer yet. We were, although that was just a few years away, I guess. But I think there, I do remember there being a computer lab you could go to and, and complete some of your work, you know. Hmm. Well, so what did you do after you left for the second time? I, you know, I mentioned I, my master's is in business education, and I did look at a couple of teaching possibilities, but I also looked at, at some other avenues, and I had a friend who was, um, she had gone to take a test she had to take at that time to, to get a government job. And she told me about that. She told me mainly about getting a test and, and trying to get on at Tinker Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. And um, so I pursued that. I went and took the test. And um, But it was the U.S. Department of Agriculture that called me first. And they had a position in Oklahoma City uh, with the Agri Agriculture Statistics Division. Um, and so I hired on with them. and, and uh, I am still with that agency. At that time, I started as a what's called a support staff person or a agricultural status, agricultural statistical assistant <laughs> was my official title. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, I worked in that um, capacity for two years. Um, I had I had taken statistics as part of my master's. Um, but in order to meet their requirements, the agency's requirements to be a statistician, I had to have one more statistics class. So I just went up to UCO at Edmond and, and took it. And then I was able to qualify to be an agricultural statistician. And that's, that's still my current title, although it's a little bit misleading. I don't really do that much with actual statistics. Um, these days we have computers that do a lot of the actual statistical formulas and stuff like that. But what, mainly what I do in my current position is we have field enumerators all over Oklahoma um, and in every state in the, the country where they go out and interview farmers on the various agricultural surveys we do. And, and basically they collect the data and then it's compiled and anytime you read in the paper about how the the crops are doing this year, you know, the big thing in Oklahoma is wheat, obviously, and cattle. That's what we do. We put out those reports. Uh, but my main job is being the coordinator of the enumerators, uh, making sure they have what they need to do, to do all the surveys we do, and providing training with, for them, as I mentioned. So I do some adult training, um, and answering a lot of phone calls from them, making sure they answering their questions and that sort of thing. That's mainly what I do today. So it's interesting, you still have a statistician title, but it sounds like you're more uh, sort of a... Kind of a human resource yeah. black person. <laughs> right, or, or uh, yeah. well, an administrator for um, a group of surveyors, right? And yes. So you kind of yes. sort of... Um, manage the ducklings, so to speak, you know, to yes. send people back out. Sometimes it feels that way, <laughs> but it, it's a really good job, though. I'm, I'm really, really glad that's where I, where I landed. Yeah, talk to me a little bit about that. When you decided to go take that test, did you have expectations? I, I did. Um, like I say, a friend of mine had recommended it to me, and she mentioned getting on a Tinker Air Force Base and how they had a upward mobility program where you... Um, you could move up through the, the, the grade levels of being a federal employee. And um, so that was what I was thinking I would do. Um, but like I say, I heard from the Department of Agriculture first, which, was, which has been a really good fit for me too. While I did not major in agriculture per se, I, I did grow up on a farm with cattle, mm -hmm. and, and so I did have somewhat of an ag background. I've, I've learned much more about agriculture since, uh, since working for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, <laughs> and um, so that's, that's been good. Well, it's interesting since OSU has such a huge agricultural program, I mean, it's mm -hmm. a big component that, um, that that's the line of work you ended up in, but you were one of the sort of, not minority, but from a rural background coming to OSU, that sort of is a minority to not right. go into the agricultural school. 
um, but yet still ended up in a USDA position. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm curious too, you, uh, not to just jump around, but um, when you were in Pride and you were teaching, mm-hmm. um, was there something? Was there something in particular that made it not a good fit for you? I mean, like that's a pretty big decision to think I'm going to be a teacher and then after your first year be like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go back and do something else. Um, I don't know. I think I just, I think on some level, while teaching was something I thought I wanted to do, I think I was doing it more to please my family than because it was really what I wanted. Um, so I think, I think that was a lot of it. And after I saw what all was involved and everything, I think I just realized maybe this is not what I want to do. That sounds like it was the right decision. Yes. yes. Yeah. So you, um, you've worked for the USDA. Have you um, worked for, you work for the Oklahoma City branch now? I do. Um, I started in Oklahoma City in 1989. Um, my agency has, we have an office in every state um, and we have a headquarters office in Washington, D.C. They've, they've realigned or restructured, as they say, the agency in the last few years, so it's, it's a little different than it used to be. But um, I worked here in Oklahoma City until the year 2000. I, in, during that time, I married my husband, too. Um, he was um, active duty Air Force, stationed at Tinker, actually. And um, he had to move to Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri. And, uh, and so my agency also allowed me to move to our office in Missouri, which was in Columbia, Missouri, about the middle of Missouri. So I worked there for eight years, and we lived there. Um, and then in 2008, he had retired from the Air Force by that time, and uh, he, had, he still had contacts back here at Tinker for doing contract work. Um, he's an electrician. That, that's a skill he picked up in the Air Force. And, uh, and we both really wanted to get back here, too, because we have family here and everything. And, and so the the agency agreed to let me come back to our office here in Oklahoma, so that's that's been really been a really good uh, opportunity for us. You landed in Blanchard, and we landed in Blanchard in, in, at that time in a way, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm curious about the community here in Blanchard. Actually, I mean it's a pretty small community. Um, I don't really know much about it. Is there a, is it um, do a lot of people who live here? For example, work in Oklahoma City, um, or is it? Is there an industry here that sort of drives people or keeps people here, or any ideas? Um, I think it is mostly um, what they call a bedroom community. Um, a lot of people work in Oklahoma City um, or Norman. We're just ten miles from Norman. Um, uh, there is some industry here, and they're trying to bring more in, uh, but it's there's not not that much currently. It's mostly a small town where. Uh, where people like to live because it's a nice community and, and, and they do have a good school system and, and uh, that sort of thing. But as far as industry, they don't have that much. Mm-hmm. There's still a little downtown area, so there's still stores. There's still a couple of storefronts. And yes, there is, um, there is some downtown businesses. It's a very nice library where we sit. Yes, <laughs> yes. A nice library. We also have a nice park down at the south end of town. They have, in the summertime, they have concerts there on Friday nights, and, uh, and they have a bluegrass festival in August, so they have a lot of good little community events like that. They have a, uh, now they have, at Halloween time, they have a big event on Main Street for the kids, and, and uh, I think they're getting ready to have a St. Patrick's Day parade, and they have a Veterans Day parade, and so it's, there's a lot of community involvement. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's a nice place to nice place to live. That's good. Um, well, so do you still get back to the OSU campus at all? I do occasionally, not as much as I would like to. Um, I it's been a couple of years since I've been able to go to a football game, um, but I am part of what uh, is might be considered a unique group. I'm <laughs> I'm part of the OSU alumni group that meets in Norman. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, we have a Cleveland and Cleveland. McLean County OSU Alumni Association. We have a, 
uh, inter-urban restaurant there in Norman is where we meet, and that's where we go to watch the football games. And, and, uh, and they're, actually, they seem pretty happy to have us, <laughs> which is it's nice. It's kind of funny, you know, I, I don't get back to Stillwater as much as I would like to, if I, I'm sure I would if I lived a little closer. Since I am just 10 miles from Norman, I, I go there to shop some. And sometimes I'll be wearing an OSU t-shirt, but a few people might look at me funny, but most people, it doesn't phase them too much. And then sometimes I'll see other people over there wearing OSU t-shirts. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Hold strong while you're in <laughs> yeah. Sooner territory. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but yeah, so I, I'm glad to be part of the, the OSU alumni group that meets in Norman. <laughs> It's a good group, actually. I've met some of them. Yeah, oh, oh, it is a really good group. Really, really good group. group. I tell um, people that, though, and they just look at me like, huh? Pretty brave. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Pretty brave. But, um, but yeah, I, I have been able to get back some to the campus, and it's amazing how much it's changed, how all the new buildings and, and that, that beautiful football stadium. And, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, I'm glad for, for all the remodeling they've been doing and, and everything. It's, it's a little different than I remember it, but but change can be good, certainly. Um, it's really really good that the, the students today have a have a beautiful campus to to uh, attend class, and so it's it's good. It's true. It does just keep keep changing. That's not going <laughs> to change in anybody's lifetime, I don't think. Yes. In fact, I for a time when I moved off campus, I lived. It was on Northwest Street, which uh, I think has been torn down. The apartments I lived in have been torn down now. I think they're part of the o that, that area is part of the OSU campus now. <laughs> and it was, you know, it was off campus. It was about you know, three or four blocks north of, of the baseball field. And uh, so that's all part of OSU now. So that seems kind of strange, <laughs> but that's uh, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that is different. Um, have you been inside the old central building since they? renovated it. I have not. I would like to do that. It's interesting. They, they, I was just thinking with your family connection, they have yes. uh, um, sort of brought it back to where it, closely to what it would have been like when it was uh, in its early years. Oh, I'll have to come go visit it. Yeah, they have some little sort of like reading nooks that are that are more like the original, but even the classroom space in there, it's really, it's really interesting because you can visualize what it would have been like to be a student when Old Central was your building. Oh, neat. <laughs> you don't have to check that out. Yeah, it can be interesting. Um, and I'll have to go back and look at our, our archives and see if I can find your, um, your grandmother Ruth. Yes. Ruth Van Arstel was her maiden Van Arstel. I'm glad you wrote it to me, wrote it out to me whenever we originally uh, yes. made contact. Because I, yeah, Van Arstel. So I'll have to go back and see if we can find anything about her and some of the early uh, material we might have yeah. at the university. It should be too hard to distinguish when there would have been only 100 or so students. Right. I, I think right. that's accurate. There was a very small population. Um, so do you still have a lot of family that live around the Payne County area then? I do have, um, my, my cousin and his family live on the part of the, the farm that was first homesteaded mm -hmm. in the land run. Um, it's about five miles west of Stillwater. Um, yeah. Their, their name's Oyster. And, uh, in fact, my cousin has twin sons that are, well, they're grown now, but they're, they're there also. Uh, so I think they're the fifth generation to, to farm the land there. And um, I guess that's the main relatives I have that live there. Mm -hmm. Another one of my uh, childhood and early adulthood memories is um, I had a great aunt. Uh, her name was Carrie Van Arsdell, uh, who, well, she and Uncle Jake, they, lived, they had a farm at Morrison, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. you know, just a little ways from Stillwater. But then he passed away in the 70s, and she moved to Stillwater, and so I remember going to visit her quite often. When, um, she was even still there when I was a student at OSU, and so I would yeah. visit her some. And, and uh, I mentioned my grandfather was still alive when I was getting my bachelor's. And, and so that was, 
that was neat to have them there when I was when I was going to OSU. I could visit them when when I was able to. That was that was one of the neat parts of being there too. Yeah, have family. Um, I wonder. You said both sort of both sets of grandparent families were in the land where they landed around um, sort of what is now the Payne County area, right around Stillwater. Um, do you know anything about where they came from or how they ended up making that run? I, I know a little bit. My grandmother's family had been in Kansas. In fact, her name uh, was Ruth Augusta Oyster, or Van Arsel. Was her name. Um, Augusta was the town in Kansas where they lived uh, before coming to uh -huh. Oklahoma during the land run. And, and actually, they part of the land they settled is now under the waters of Lake Blackwell. Uh -huh. My mother talked about how the, you know, obviously the family was, uh, did not have much money during the depression, but then when they went to put in Lake Blackwell, that, uh, they, they bought up the land that had belonged to my grandmother's family. And, and so my mother's family was able to get some of that money. And I think that helped with their education some too. But, um, but uh, yes, so my grandmother's family came from Kansas. Uh, my grandfather's family, the oysters, they came from Iowa, um, and I don't know the exact town. I've, I've, I've heard it, but I don't remember it right offhand. But I know it was Iowa. They, they had formerly lived in Iowa um, before coming to Oklahoma. Um, did they ever, uh, did they ever talk much about just sort of that general experience, I guess, they would have, if you're... Well, my grandmother was born in Stillwater. Yeah, I was going to say, your grandfather... Uh, my grandfather was, was actually born in Iowa, I believe, and he was uh, probably about right. three years old when yeah. they came. Um, he, he talked about it a little bit, about, you know, being in the covered wagon and, and uh, how there was lots of covered wagons and... <laughs> The time of the land run. I don't really remember him talking about it that much. He was he was three. He so, was yeah. yeah. He, was a, he was three, so his memories weren't all that uh -huh. all that clear. But but uh, but yeah, it was fa fascinating to to hear about it. I wasn't sure where your grandmother was born since her middle name was Augusta, and it sounds like she was named after the city in Kansas. Yeah. So I wasn't sure if she was born in Kansas because of that, or if that was given later. Yeah. So. Another memory I have of my grandfather, um, I remember going to visit him growing up, and he would usually have one of the OSU, either baseball or basketball, on the radio. Um, you know, back then, they didn't have every game on TV like they, like they do now, but, uh, but he would always have it on the radio, and, and he got me to listen to the games on the radio. Um, I, my husband is not really a sports fan at all, uh, so I kind of drive him crazy sometimes, because if OSU's on the radio, it's uh, it's on. <laughs> I'm like, honey, that's just the way it is. Just deal with it. <laughs> that's a way to tune it out. <laughs> so your grandfather, um, I don't remember you mentioning that he went to OSU. He, he did not go to OSU, but of course he lived um, in and yeah. around Stillwater most of his life. And um, yeah. so it was a big part of his life too, even though he did not uh, attend college. Um, he was, it was still a big part of his life. Yeah. He was, he was a big, big sports fan for sure. And I think, especially in the later years, my grandmother passed away um, about eight years before my grandfather. And so he was alone during that time. And I think the radio especially was something that kept him company and yeah. really, really gave him something to, to listen to. And that was the time period while you were in, in school, correct? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. That's interesting. Yeah, of, of course, the OSU sports in general has been a big part of my family, too. Um, I mentioned that my mother passed away in 91, but fortunately, that last year she was alive was the first year Eddie Sutton was the basketball coach, and I remember watching a lot of the games that were on TV with, with her that year, and, and she was she had cancer, so she was kind of sick most of that year, but uh, but we had some great times watching the watching those great games when when Eddie was first there and the, the really good teams they had then, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Um, are you following what the chatter is about Eddie Sutton in the Hall of Fame right now? I don't guess. Not much. Well, I knew they haven't actually put him in the Hall of Fame. I think, or I'm not sure what. No, the, he's up for he's up for potential. Yeah, I'm just curious. Some people have opinions about that. I know. It, 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 it seems don't to me. To. He, he, I, I know. <clears throat> I know. Some. It's unfortunate some of what happened, but I, I believe he deserves to be there. He, he, he's, he had such a great career. That's a good memory to have with your mom, though. That yes, it is. Definitely a good time period to be excited it about is. OSU basketball. Yes, and when we had the really good team in 2004, uh, that's when we were living in Missouri, and I really wanted to go. They were playing in Columbia that year. That's when Missouri was still in the Big 12, you know, and they were playing in Columbia that year. So I was able to go to that game. Of course, unfortunately, we did not win that game. <laughs> Like, that was like the only game they lost in a whole 12 week span. You know? <laughs> but, but I was so glad I was able to go because you know, I, was, I was glad I didn't get to go to many games during that time. But, but it was neat to be there even if we didn't win. <laughs> um, have you ever gone to games with like your family? Is that like with your extended family that have OSU groups? Is that or OSU ties? Is that something that? We haven't, never been a big deal. we haven't been able to do that that much. It's just because everybody's schedule just doesn't, yeah. doesn't jive too well. But certainly when we've been together and, and it's on TV, we're, we've been able to watch a lot of games together on TV, and that's always, always good. I'm sure loud. I did when, <laughs> um, in 1985, we had a good football team at that time too. Um, I was able to take my mother to some games then. That was before she got sick. And, and so that was great to take her to some football games. It's true, those were good football years. Yes, they were. I think for me, that's that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. Was there anything else that you wanted to talk about, or that we, that I left out, or? I think I've mentioned most of what I had thought about that I wanted to mention. Can't really. Okay. Can't really think of anything else. Yeah. Well, I appreciate. Um, your time and your willingness to yes. share. Oh, for sure. Been great. Good. I just, I just, Good. As, as you can tell, OSU is a big part of my life. Well, and it's it's true. You have some deep ties there. <laughs> <laughs>